Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Naveen. I am an application engineer at Remcom. And today I will be presenting the webinar on XFTTD's transient EM circuit co simulation for TVS diode ESD protection. To start off, I would like to give you an overview of the things I will be covering in today's webinar starting with the basics of electrostatic discharge which i will be referring to as esd throughout the presentation and transient voltage suppressor diodes which i would be referring as tvs diodes throughout the webinar and next looking into three different kind of solvers the fttd standalone circuit standalone and transient em circuit co-simulation and uh, then an example uh, where the transient em circuit co-simulation is used to protect an rf front end from esd and finally the interesting part the esd simulation workflow to uh, simulate uh, tvs diodes a quick note uh, we have the go to webinar window uh, where you can type your questions throughout the presentation and we have uh, a moderator uh, jeff barney who is a product manager who would be answering any questions you may have during the presentation and a point to note uh, these question steps can be undocked uh, to have to use it easier so you can type in the questions and send it to us so what is electrostatic discharge so electrostatic discharge is the sudden flow of charge or electricity through uh, two electrically charged objects and often uh, through electrical short or contact and in many cases through a dielectric breakdown and in case of electronic devices exposed uh, parts like displays hdmi ports antennas and other parts form an avenue to transients triggered by human interaction or due to or to a contact of a charged device and in most cases this flow comes with a charge it damages the internal circuitry leading to the device operation failure on the long run therefore electronic manufacturers go to great lengths to properly shield sensitive components in their devices and one of the most uh, proven methodology or wide, widely used methodology is to use transient voltage suppressor diodes across uh, diff along different parts of the hardware maybe the input output lines supplies or the audio hardware or in displays and in many places however testing for esd susceptibility and finalizing a protection circuitry can be time consuming and expensive in many cases if engineers solely relied on hardware testing and further latent damages to the device uh, to the internal components might go undetected in hardware testing which can lead to the failure of the product in the customer's hands losing their confidence and to add another complexity the complex hardware uh, that would be designed for upcoming technologies would make it even more uh, challenging for the ESD engineers to come up with a better solution for their products. So imagine a methodology which can actually simulate the entire ESD testing procedure in a software even before getting to the hardware manufacturing. So a system level ESD simulation which can be performed with the latest features added to XFTTD would be the main theme of today's webinar and before I get into the specifics I would like to first give a overview of transient voltage suppressor diodes so TVS diodes unlike other PN junction diodes have a large cross-sectional area for absorbing high transient currents and in case of an over voltage event these diodes shunt most of the current to the ground allowing a very minimal flow of voltage through the uh, through the components that needs to be protected and in this case uh, IC 
and here we see a simplified representation of the TVS diode. However, looking internally, uh, this would be the actual representation of the TVS diodes, which often uh, are provided by manufacturers. And looking into its functionality, so the diodes operate in two regions, uh, uh, in two uh, uh, regions, the forward bias and the reverse bias, and under the forward bias condition, as the voltage across these diodes increase, the current through them also increases. And in the reverse bias, specifically in the leakage region, the diode is still not turned on. So under this case, there is a very minimal current flowing through the device, which is not actually affecting the performance of the circuit to be protected. But as the voltage increases further, reaching to a point called clamp voltage, so this is a point where most of the current is shunted to the ground and uh, the excessive voltage is uh, clamped off. In case of a unidirectional diode, the way the uh, it is laid right now, it would actually chop off the in, uh, negative transient and in case of a bidirectional diode it would chop off both or clamp both the positive and negative transients however the nonlinear devices simulation in a full wave solver can be challenging as the full wave solvers can effectively model uh, the linearity because of uh, of the 3d devices or, or 3D uh, CAD model, CAD geometries. So, how uh, do we include this in such solvers? So, even before I get into that, let us first uh, understand how a full wave solver works. So, XFTTD is a full wave solver based on the finite difference time domain technique, which solves the Maxwell's equations to get the electric and magnetic fields of different components in time domain. And in such a approach, the CAD geometry would be discretized uh, into small cubicle cells in space. And in this case, we have a phone a model which is modified. And this is a model provided by Motorola Mobility and looking into a small portion of this device, which includes the antenna and the front end IC. So uh, you can see that the model is discretized into cubicle cells. And here is the antenna feed, which is giving the signal to the RF IC, uh, which is modeled using the resistor here through the matching network. And looking into a specific cube so here the e fields are calculated at the edges of these cubicle cells and the h fields are calculated at the faces of these cells and such a representation is called a e cell and further the time itself is discretized into small steps which signifies the time required for the em wave uh, to travel from one cell to the other and using a leapfrog methodology, uh, these fields are updated for different cells. So in summary, uh, FTTD is providing you a snapshot of electromagnetic waves propagating at different time steps. To solve a transient phenomena like ESD, time domain solvers like FTTD can be uh, highly beneficial. And to that extent, if XFDTD has some of uh, some features in its arsenal to support this kind of an application. So first feature is exact. Uh, this is a subcellular modeling technique that replaces traditional rectangular grid of FTTD in selective regions. To demonstrate this, I have a circular patch with slots in this case and if a rectangular grid was used to discretize this geometry this would uh, give us a staircasing effect around the edges not modeling uh, it accurately and to do so we might have to resort to go to a finer grid which would take the memory up and also reduction in time step which leads to the increase in runtime 
to solve this we have exact which accurately models the curved structures and using a larger cell sizes reducing the memory and runtime and this kind of uh, feature can be uh, highly beneficial when modeling very small gaps between different conductors avoiding an electrical short between the two the next feature is singularity correction uh, which is an advanced uh, gridding option in xf which accurately captures the high varying fields at the edges of the conductor so in this case i have a 79 gigahertz radar example with four series fed patch antenna arrays with eight elements each and we have uh, performed two simulations the first one uh, with singularity correction disabled and you can see that the high fields across this patch is modeled using a very fine grid where a two uh, k80 graphic cards are required along with a memory of 6.8 gigabits and to run the simulation which took about two hours 21 minutes and a second simulation with singularity correction enabled you can see a coarser grid utilized to uh, more effectively handle the E and H fields transitions at the edges of the conductors where a one graphic card and one gigabit of memory was uh, sufficient to run a simulation which took about 21 minutes. And this feature can be uh, specifically helpful in modeling high transient currents under the chips. The third feature, dielectric volume averaging, which considers the volume around each FTTD cell edge uh, before assigning the material properties to uh, each of these cell edges. And in this case, we have uh, uh, four different materials covering a FTTD cell edge, where the material properties for this would be assigned considering the volume portion of each of these dielectrics covering the cell edge. So uh, same uh, model has been created in XF where you can see that the material properties for this cell uh, is dependent on the volume portion where all the four cubes are equally covering the cell edge. So a 25% of all the four material properties is assigned to uh, such cell edges. And Coming to the next feature, which is the user-defined waveform. So in most of the ESC testing uh, uh, procedures, the waveform models are defined by organizations like ANSI, JDEC, or IEC. And XF's user-defined waveform feature can be used to import such waveform models defined by uh, these standards, and also to create uh, these waveforms internally in this case i have a human body model waveform which is imported into xf and this model aptly uh, approximates the discharge happening uh, due to the charge stored at the human fingertip to a grounded device and here we have imported this and the reference for this has been a keenan rossi paper and if the same have to be uh, analytically modeled, the enter equation methodology can be used to enter the equation of interest. To see what uh, such a waveform does, we have a video that shows on what happens if such a ESD waveform is exciting the antenna and the front end. So to play that, let me make use of, okay, the pointer here. And as you can see at the beginning, the fields were all initialized to zero and the fields were provided at the tip of the ESD gun, which is not shown here. Uh, but as the time progresses, the EM fields propagate through uh, the different components. And in this case, we are actually looking into the H fields. Uh, and this can be used to calculate the current across or on the different components. 
and in this case we have the antenna feed here and a series uh, component uh, a capacitor and a shunt inductor and the 50 ohm resistor and you can see uh, the currents across these are very high and in these cases uh, full wave equations actually don't compute the voltage and currents through complex nonlinear components which means that we can only effectively model any ESC events that can occur in such cases but not the protection circuitry itself on the contrary uh, the circuit solver uh, uses uh, different nodes elements and uh, edges to uh, discretize or, or to uh, model different uh, components in the circuit and in this case uh, we have a tvs diode uh, which is actually placed uh, before the matching network and the rf front end combo to protect uh, or to shunt most of the current to the ground and kirchhoff's current law is utilized in such solvers to model the connectivity between the different components and a non-linear uh, system of equations is generated uh, by an iterative solver which solves for the voltage currents and different results for across these components and in this case we have the same 15 kilovolts human body model waveform uh, input into the circuit and the current across the rf front end is plotted here and as you can see uh, this is like a more simplified representation of the entire model and does not account for the time domain variability and these cases would be beneficial in modeling the nonlinear effects of diodes but would not give us the time domain variability uh, due to the 3d device or 3d CAD geometry so how do we solve uh, this problem and it turns out that we would have to combine the advantages of these two solvers and in xf's latest release we now have the transient em circuit co simulation which includes uh, a full wave 3d electromagnetic solver based on fttd method combined with a transient non-linear circuit solver where the time step of the full wave solver and the circuit solver is synced and at each time step the fttd solver passes the cell edge current to the circuit solver which computes the tvs diode system of equations and then returns the voltage to the fttd for its use to uh, demonstrate how the solver works i have a video of the same front end but this time using a tvs diode to uh, shunt the current to the ground even before the energy travels to the matching network and the ic so let me play the video here so as the time uh, progresses you can see the edge fields uh, propagating through the different components of the structure uh, and in this case you can see uh, most of the current being shunted to the ground through the dvs diode protecting the matching network and and the ic in turn so uh, looking into uh, the actual model uh, in in the transient em uh, circuit co simulator uh, we have the tvs diode placed here and the representation of this can be entered into the simulation space through a netlist which is provided by manufacturers and here i have two simulations that i have performed uh, the first case being without a tvs diode used in the simulation and you can see the blue curve uh, represents the current across the front end and a high current of about four amperes uh, can be seen across the component but when a tvs diode is used this current significantly drops uh, protecting the IC from a current surge. Coming to the last part of the webinar, 
which is to look into uh, the EST simulation workflow of how TVS diodes can be simulated in XF. And this is a four step process. First step being to import the CAD model into the software. And next would be to import the TVS diode netlist from the manufacturer and place it in the right location. Create an ESD simulation and after the simulation is complete, view the results to uh, check the required outputs. And now I would like to uh, transit to the XF solver. So here we have the same model which is imported into uh, the XFTTD software. And here we have a floating antenna. So this model is modified for demonstration purposes. And we have included this floating antenna as part of that. And zooming close into the components, here is the front end with the series capacitor, shunt inductor, and the resistor, which is used as a surrogate for the front end IC. And the definitions for these components are available under circuit component definitions where the rated voltage and currents are specified for these different components, which allows or notifies the solver to monitor the voltages and currents across these components. And to run an EST simulation, we are making use of the simplified EST con representation to which a hard current source is connected and the other end of the gun is grounded. And the definition of this current source can be accessed through the circuit component definitions where we are not using a resistance across this and we are using the human body model waveform to excite the structure. And the waveform can be accessed from the waveform definitions. So, yeah, as you can see, this is the same waveform that we saw earlier in the presentation. And to add a TVS diode to this, we can do that through the circuit components and adding a new netlist component definition. And I would like to place this netlist component first in my CAD model and I would place that between the antenna feed and the ground and name this as TBS diode. Oh, that's a small guy. And this is not a port. So I would uncheck this and clicking done. Now we have the component placed to load the netlist we can access the netlist component definition in the circuit component definitions tab and import the netlist and here i have the netlist uh, provided by one of the manufacturers which i would be opening and you can view or edit this netlist so this is right now in the view mode and you can actually go and edit the netlist if required and this uh, pretty much has the TVS diode into the simulation space. And the next step would be to create an FTTD simulation. And that can be done through the simulation tab, where we can create the FTTD simulation, setting up a parameter sweep if required to excite different points on the CAD geometry and check uh, the ports on which the S parameters needs to be computed and specify frequency of interest if steady state data needs to be collected. And finally, uh, specify a termination criteria. And in this case, I uh, already have run a few simulations to save us some time. And these simulations had a termination criteria about 10 nanoseconds. And I would like to uh, show you the results from the simulations. 
So uh, here are the two plots that we saw earlier, the blue one showing how the current across the front end would look like if there is no TVS diodes used and the red curve indicating the performance of the TVS diode and showing the drop in current across the front end due to the addition of TVS diode. With this, I would like to uh, get back to the presentation. And that uh, wraps up the slides, uh, the demo part of the today's webinar that I wanted to go over. And now I would like to open it up for questions. and questions okay i can see that some questions were asked when i was available uh, when i was presenting okay can this tool be used to also correctly model other transients such as typically tested in std461 and do you have customers that have used this tool for this type of simulations i assume this would have to be user defined model inputs for the waveforms unless you have those waveforms already defined in your library so thank you for this question uh, that's actually a very good question. Uh, yes, uh, the user defined waveforms can be used to uh, import such uh, transients. So uh, all that we would require is the waveform itself. So if we are having the access to such waveforms, uh, they can be imported and the tests related to uh, these different standards can be performed in XF. and the next question uh, how are the tvs diodes modeled so uh, to model the tvs diodes uh, two main criteria are the working voltage and capacitance uh, which are often provided in a form of netlist and uh, what we do is we import these netlists uh, which are actually describing the characteristics that are provided by the manufacturer to uh, model model these diodes and the next question do you support bidirectional tvs diodes uh, yes uh, we support both unidirectional and bidirectional tvs diodes for esd simulations and moving into other questions so the other question is can you trace the path of esd signal propagation on the board um yes that's a good question we can do that by placing uh, near field sensors on different planes and we provide an option to monitor field versus time or also versus uh, frequency so to demonstrate that let me take you back to the project here so let me close this window and this one too so under project tree under sensors we have the option to uh, place different near field sensors and in this case the sensor of interest would be the planar sensor which can be placed on any of the planes uh, easily so you can pick the sample plane and in this case i will pick the substrate here and we can click done for now because this is place the sensors and to access the surface sensor definition you can go to the definitions tab where you can select the kind of fields that you want to monitor uh, in this case e or h fields would be sufficient to uh, track uh, the propagation of the esd pulse so coming back to the 
questions okay and we have another question here does tvs diodes impact uh, ota performance so yeah there are possible two impacts that i can think of so tvs diodes may generate harmonics that desenses the antenna and the other would be that they may introduce a shunt capacitance which would have to be accounted for in the matching network so and these possibilities mainly uh, depend on the antenna design and the specific placement of the tvs diodes okay and the next question is the netlist a spice model uh yes thank you for the question uh, uh it seems like i uh, did not specify that in my presentation yes so the netlist is a spice model uh, that we are using so can the tvs model be uh, used in key side cds uh, yes the tvs models in xf are uh, based on the spice representation and you can have that imported into ads and the next question so can you model the esd event itself uh, yes we can uh, do that uh, so just with the full wave solver uh, we have some of the other features such as dielectric breakdown uh, monitoring capability so let me go back to the solver again to demonstrate that so under the sensors as i specified earlier we have something called as a dielectric breakdown sensor which can be uh, used to model uh, the breakdowns happening in different places what the solver does is that it monitors the e fields across each fttd cell edge at each time instant and this will be monitored with the dielectric strength uh, provided for each of the materials and you can actually select the bounding uh, area like in which you want to uh, monitor such uh, such effects and after placing these sensors again the definitions of this can be modified from the definitions tab where you can actually specify uh, the different timestamps or sampling intervals if you do not wish to uh, capture a very fine set of data for the breakdown information and the other feature uh, that can be used for the same purpose is the rated components feature which actually uh, monitors the current and voltage across different components uh, modeled uh, maybe resistors capacitors inductors that are in some sense signifying the surrogates for different parts and you can get a list of uh, the actual voltage and currents across these components uh, which would showcase that the ESD event has actually caused this abrupt increase in the different uh, parameters across these components. So which version is available for ESD transient simulation? So uh, this is available in the XF uh, 7.9.2 version. Okay, so yeah, there are still a lot of questions uh, that are uh, that have been asked to which I am not necessarily familiar. Uh, with the answers to so I would be uh, checking with my uh, colleagues and get back to you on these answers uh, later today or tomorrow so with that I would like to wrap this webinar up and I would like to thank everybody for coming in and you should be looking for a copy of the webinar that would be emailed to all the attendees you can share them with your colleagues and if you have any questions
questions on what you saw uh, feel free to contact us and we will probably be getting back to you uh, to see what you uh, think of the content so thank you for your time and i hope you enjoyed it have a, a great day thank you